Thanks for giving me this opportunity to talk today on polytrauma and children. Um, what I'm going to try and do is outline the differences between children and adults um, in all these topics. In the UK, um, we have a, a TARN organization called Trauma Audit and uh, Research Network. And uh, this uh, network collects information on all major trauma in the UK. It uh, collects it on adults and children uh, for patients who are admitted for more than 72 hours to hospital or are admitted to ICU or transferred to another hospital for specialist treatment or die as a result of their injuries. And they have uh, an abbreviated injury severity score of greater than or equal to two. From um, this data, it's apparent that the, the uh, leading cause of death and people up to the age of 44 years is trauma. 16% of one to four year olds um, die as, as, as a result of trauma. This increases to 40% in teenagers. Looking at the proportion of children compared to adults for major trauma, um, up until 2004, 20% were children. But over the last few years, the proportion has reduced to almost half at 11%. Kids' bones are obviously different. They're smaller, they're more elastic and plastic, which means that they deform. Uh, they have thicker periosteum, they um, heal very quickly, and most importantly, they have growth plates. Girls stop growing at 14 years of age, and boys stop growing at 16 years of age. Do not damage their growth plates while you're treating their fractures. I'm going to outline their physiological differences by going through the ABCDE of the primary survey in uh, an ATLS assessment. Children um, have bigger heads, so A is for airway and C-spine, they have bigger heads, um, and when they're lying supine on a spine board, their head is uh, sitting higher than their shoulders, so it flexes their neck. So it's important to remember that you put either a small pillow or blankets underneath the shoulder to try and keep their neck in neutral alignment. Their airway is shorter and narrower, so they need smaller tubes. And looking at their C-spine again, there's a, a situation called pseudosubluxation, uh, which occurs at the C2-3 level in almost up to 20% of kids. And this is a normal phenomenon where C2 sits a little bit anterior and C3. It's not an acute injury. Don't get them confused. Skywara is spinal cord injury without radiological abnormality. It's a very rare problem, and it occurs more commonly in children, though, than adults. So uh, although it's rare, it's important. Keep an eye out for it. So B is for breathing. Kids breathe an awful lot quicker than adults. They're very susceptible to hypoxia, which can lead to cardiac arrest. And it just emphasizes the point that uh, trauma patients need oxygenated from the minute they arrive in your department. This is the, the most important slide, I think. Um, C is for circulation. Blood volume varies from infants 100 mils per kilo up to teenagers, 70 mils per kilo, just like an adult. If you take a 10 kilogram child, um, they have a blood volume of approximately 80 mils per kilo. That's 800 mils, which is two and a half cans of Coke. That is their entire blood volume, okay? Blood pressure is 80 mils um, of mercury um, plus two times their age in years. They can maintain their blood pressure until stage three or stage four shock. So up until they lose 40 to 45 percent of their blood volume, that's much longer than adults. The problem is, though, although they compensate for longer, they decompensate extremely quickly. They will, you will lose them if you don't keep on top of their blood loss. They need um, uh, vascular access quickly. Uh, ATLS recommends that you have two goes at uh, peripheral venous access. If you can't get a Venflon in, go for an intraosseous needle. It's becoming very, very common. It's a very rapid and efficient method of um, administering fluid and blood. Children who are in hypovolemic shock require boluses of uh, either normal saline or Hartman's. 
20 mils per kilo, repeat it once or twice. If you're not improving, they need blood and you need to turn the tap off. You have to identify where they're bleeding from. Urinary output must be maintained. Um, in young children and infants, it's two mils per kilo per hour. In older children, it's one mil per kilo per hour. Um, and don't forget that in the little children under 15 kilos, use catheters without balloons or you'll damage the urethra. D is for disability. Again, because they've got larger heads, if they're in a, a, a car and they're restrained and involved in an accident, the forward momentum during the rapid deceleration will lead to more cervical spine injuries than in adults. The Glasgow Coma Scale is also a bit hard to assess in children. So kids under four, it's been modified. The um, eye component and the motor component are the same, but the verbal component is adjusted so that if they can say appropriate words, they socially um, smile and fix and follow, then they get full marks of five out of five. Thankfully, spinal cord injuries are rare, but important. E is for exposure. Kids have a higher body surface area to body mass ratio, which leads to hypothermia. So it's extremely important that warming blankets are used right from the beginning. I'm going to try and um, show you some recent literature on injuries in kids. Um, one thing that I don't have a paper for, but is well known, Kids can get uh, lung injuries without fractures because their ribs bend. So don't be surprised if children have a serious lung injury and there's no obvious skeletal injury. For many years, um, intra-abdominal injuries um, in children have been managed more non-operatively than adults. And these are two papers which demonstrate that between 80 and 94% of liver and renal injuries are managed non-operatively. Lap belts. If you have kids, uh, be wary. This study um, from Auckland showed 19 kids with lap belt injuries. 15 had hollow viscous injuries. Seven had spinal injuries and one died. So they're extremely dangerous. If you have children, put them in three-point harnesses, never in a lap belt. They're very dangerous. Pelvic injuries. Thankfully, they're much rare, rarer than in adults. Um, this study of almost 3,000 children um, identified eight kids with pelvic injuries. They were all due to high-energy um, car accidents. A quarter, only a quarter, needed any surgical treatment. But the majority had associated injuries in two or more organ systems. So a pelvic injury in a child is a marker for major trauma. Multiply injured um, patients... Thankfully, again, the incidence is much lower in children than compared to adults. This is the last paper, and it was published this month. Um, it looked at the injury pattern and uh, mortality in the UK for children with polytrauma. They used the TARN database, which we talked about earlier, and um, the vast majority of kids had a limb injury, and that's why orthopedics is so involved in polytrauma. It's just because of the volume. None of, very few of them die, though. The mortality rate for isolated limb injuries is only 1.2%. When you look at the overall rate, they describe 3.7%. If you have a head injury with a GCS less than 15, it climbs to 16%. If you associate an, a, a thoracic injury with a head injury or an abdominal injury with a head injury, it shoots up to 50% mortality. It's huge. You need to keep a close eye on these kids when they come in. Treatment, I would stick to the basic principles we've all learned, ATLS, uh, damage control surgery, damage control orthopedics, and followed by definitive surgery. After adequate resuscitation, you need to involve all the necessary subspecialties. Consider transferring children to a trauma service that deals with children. They have to have a pediatric intensive care unit. You cannot manage multiply injured children satisfactorily without that backup. It's very important once you've finished everything to then get them back to their normal function and that means rehabilitation. So 
After completing the ABCDEs of primary survey, dealing with the life-threatening problems, then the limb-threatening problems, I would advise you to avoid splints for long periods. I haven't seen any slides of Thomas splints. We use Thomas splints uh, for the emergency treatment of all femoral fractures, both adults and children. I would convert the um, splints to flexible nails or external fixators as soon as you can, and for small bones, use casts uh, with or without K wires. There's no point having a fantastic operation that you get a poor outcome because of an avoidable complication. And it's the simple things. Children um, who are intubated and ventilated and paralyzed do not need a cervical collar on. They get sores at the back of their heads so quickly. So if they're in intensive care, you've got a good intensive care that's sensible, the collars need to come off. Thomas splints that I talked about. Children that I see often have a femur fracture and a head injury and uh, the neurosurgeon wants their head tilted up and I want their leg tilted up and in between they get a sore from the ring. So that's why we try and get rid of the splint as soon as possible. They need nourish because they're catabolic. Um, you must keep them warm. You must rehabilitate them even if they're not capable of walking. You need to keep their limbs moving. This child uh, unfortunately got lost to follow up inside the hospital. They're on a neurosurgical ward and the orthopedic guys forgot to go and see her. And then she had bilateral femoral fractures, and now she can't straighten her legs, which is unforgivable. So you've done all the hard work, and then you've um, forgotten to keep her rehabilitated. Sepsis can occur from lines, uh, tubes, wounds, and sores. So make sure uh, you keep on top of that. Specific complications you need to actively look for. Compartment syndrome occurs, uh, and in, unfortunately, in these severely injured children, they can't speak, they're ventilated or unconscious. You need to look for it. You can have a supracondylar fracture, which you fix nicely, but if they get a Volkmann's ischemic contracture, they have no function. You must look for it. Malunion can occur, particularly shortening in kids treated in traction. Growth arrest can occur if uh, growth plate injuries uh, are, um, have happened. Overgrowth in the little children under the age of eight can be up to a centimeter, but as much as three centimeters. And failure of fixation, which can occur in both adults as well. Prognosis. Um, this um, paper uh, looking at um, children with ISS scores greater than 15 showed that 80 percent um, survival, which is great. But at nine years, 42 percent had a cognitive impairment. 12% had some form of physical disability, uh, although 76% were still at school or in employment. So children do well, but they don't do perfect, okay? So in conclusion, um, with respect to polytrauma in children, the incidence appears to be decreasing. Although they compensate for longer, they decompensate very quickly. Stick to the basic principles. Involve other disciplines early. Consider transfer to a trauma center early. And don't forget rehabilitation. Thanks very much.